Are you ready to take the next step in your Python scripts? Stay tuned to learn about async IO on the next episode of DevNet Snack Minute. Hey everyone, I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hola snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a developer advocate with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 24 of DevNet Snack Minutes. If you don't know what Snack Minute is by now, Snack Minute is your 10 minute all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs and just some cool stuff that we do here at DevNet. And the cool thing that we're going to be doing today is talking to one of our colleagues, Jason Davis, about async IO. Uh, Jason, feel free to uh, introduce yourself. Well, hello, I'm Jason Davis. I'm a distinguished engineer at Cisco and part of the DevNet team now. And uh, I do a lot around network management and operations, automation, orchestration. And uh, you may have seen me at Cisco Live uh, in our physical events in the US and Europe, helping to run the show network in the NOC. Welcome to the show and the team, Jason. Uh, I, we wanted to start just to uh, give our audience an understanding. What, what is the topic that we're talking about? What is, what is Async IO? Async IO is a new module capability in Python. Um, I'm suggesting people, if they're going to implement it, be around version 3.7 or higher. And what it allows you to do is uh, cooperative multitasking, essentially. You've heard of multiprocessing, you've heard of threading, concurrency, parallelism, there's all these advanced topics. What I'm seeing are people are probably ready now with their Python skills to take the next step. Going from having sequential kind of Python scripts that do one thing after the other to taking the next step where a Python script can do multiple things or at least track multiple things and pause work and move to the next thing that's ready in order to do work faster. So I'm familiar with the native threading library in Python. Uh, can you help me understand this in relation to that multiprocessing and other uh, concurrent programming technologies? Sure. Uh, well, let's start with um, multiprocessing. This would be something that would be great for something that's very CPU heavy, right? Uh, Bitcoin mining, right? And, you know, Kareem, you know, why are you buying all these graphics cards? You know, you're, you and the Bitcoin <laughs> miners are the ones that, you know, don't allow us to get the NVIDIA RTS 20, 3080s out there, and we can't enjoy life with our video games anymore. But, you know, more seriously, Sorry, Bitcoin dude. mining and other things like that are very uh, CPU intensive, right? So they're not really uh, a good use case for using async IO. Async IO is great when you're talking about IO type intensive use cases and things that are very buffered, right? So what do we know? API calls across the network where you don't have control of the latencies and how fast or responsive that other API endpoint is. That makes a lot of sense for using something like async IO that CPU is only issuing the command but then it's sitting there waiting for that network and the other side to respond with the final results. So in, in our world, uh, I get the sense that this would come in handy, right? Especially the example that you just gave us where, you know, we're waiting on, on, on the network to respond. And if you have, you know, no threading and you have a top down um, script that's waiting, it, nothing will execute. So, how how can we use it and and how does that how does async IO come in play there? Right. So it it allows you to kind of take a look at your Python script and say, you know, this is going to be something that has a web request behind it, and I might need to wait for the response, or potentially something else that could be somewhat blocking, like file operations. If you're using some old spinning Rust disk and you might need to wait for a big file to come down, then that's another thing that would be a good use case for async IO. Uh, although increasingly with flash storage and NVMe type storage, that file operation, especially if it's local to the system, may not be as blocking as you know one might think. It becomes more memory-like, but still very much so the network 
uh, API call is something that makes a lot of sense. Uh, if we look at a practical example, folks that are familiar with Meraki, right, and you're trying to pull down information from Meraki about all your equipment that's cloud managed, well, that can take a long time. And I have a, some customer experience there. We're working with a large United States bank environment, thousands of networks and thousands of devices. And it would take us, uh, if we did it sequentially, over two days to download and extract all of the settings because of the API rate limiting and, and things of that nature. And using uh, a more modular approach and one that uses async, async IO and allows for giving up control to an event queue to say, hey, I've got all this extra work that I could be doing while you wait for that big API call, right? We've been able to squash that down to like, you know, a quarter of the time. You, uh, you actually uh, answered my question. I was going to ask how you've used it. Or, or do you have any other examples beyond the, your Meraki example? Sure. I mean, if we look at other things, like maybe you're building uh, some kind of software image upgrade process, and we know it takes a long time to SFTP an image, and you don't want to sit there waiting while you know a 64 meg file is getting pushed when you can start working on a second, a third, a fourth image or anything else, right? And that makes a lot of sense when you have very similar work across different devices that you can just queue them all up and allow an event handler to work on it as uh, more availability uh, manifests itself. Yeah, I could see I could see a lot of use cases with th with this library. Uh, one of the my experiences is trying to do configuration management on multiple devices, where you're running show commands and you're trying to show run commands and trying to save that. It takes a while. So especially if you have thousands of devices, if you're trying to do this in sequential, it's gonna you're gonna be waiting forever. So this come in, this could come in handy in in a lot of use cases. Jason, you got me super excited about this uh, async I/O and library. Uh, would you mind coming back next week to kind of drill into code and we can look at some use cases that you've written? Definitely. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that, Snackers, uh, thank you for your time and join us on our next episode of DevNet Snack Minute.